What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Dan Paul. We back, and we are live for episode 15, and you already know the hair is mean, yo. Damn, this shit clean. You know how this go, man. You know, I want to get right into it, man. You know, a lot of things been transpiring within the last couple of days, you know. Um, my last episode, you know, I had Nisha's Kitchen. You know, we spoke on, you know, what it's like to be a woman that's an entrepreneur. You know, her being a person that's starting to cook from her kitchen in the future, potentially owning a business. Um, and also just basically <clears throat> keeping up with the competition and things in that sort until today episode where we're covering the Nipsey Hustle murder. Yeah, so we're going to cover the Nipsey Hustle murder. So the, over this past weekend, Nipsey Hustle was murdered. Um, when I say weekend, Sunday, you know, uh, you know, I had my last show, The Next Up with Dev Hall, and I was speaking with um, a friend of mine, Mitch Lakes, about it. You know, it was breaking news before I, you know, shot the episode, and it was disturbing. And I say disturbing, not to hear about it, but to actually see the visual of him having his damn brains, you know, out. You feel me? Not like we ain't see his brains, but like I seen his head shot, and, and you know, I seen something real explicit to the point where, you know, it just instantly gave me chills. You feel me? Like I don't understand what the world is coming to. You know, um, it's scary. It's frightening. You know, it's people that you feel as though you're close with. It's people that you feel as though you know, you knew growing up that won't do anything to you. But we already know we live in an envious world. We live in a jealous world. We live in a hatred world, you know. But to a point where when is this shit going to stop, you know. The thing that I'm confused about is <clears throat> a lot of people are trying to act like it's something wrong with trying to figure it out. And when I say trying to figure it out, a lot of people are actually being aware of this Dr. Sebi, you feel me? A lot of people didn't know who Dr. Sebi was. You know, I'm a person that knew who Dr. Sebi was. And you probably, Dad, you just saying that because everyone posting on the gram, no. Once again, you know, I'm not just saying it just to say it because I have a show. I'm saying it because I'm educated and I'm aware of these African-American figures that are, you know, planting knowledge in my, you know, my brain. And I spoke about this before. I listened to people like Dick Gregory, you know, before he passed away. He was very knowledgeable. You know, he ran for president. Y'all probably don't even know who Dick Gregory is. You know, go look him up. I look, listen to Umar Johnson. And I also listen to Brother Polite. And I also listen to other people in that nature. You know, Michael Dyson, a lot of different people. You know, I'm young, but I'm very inclined um, <clears throat> to what I need to know. But when it comes down to Nipsey Hussle, you know, those people gave me some type of awareness who Dr. Sabi was. Nipsey Hussle, you know, I was unaware. I'm going to keep it a bean. I was unaware that he was actually dropping a documentary. Now, when I found out he was going to drop this documentary based on a 1985 trial um, that Dr. C.B. was going um, against the government in the, in the Supreme Court, I believe, you know, he beat both cases, basically proving that he can cure, you know, patients from AIDS. You know, a lot of people weren't aware of this because it's not publicized. It's not in, it's not in our face where we know about it because, as we know, there's no cure for AIDS, right? That's, that's, what we, that's what we know. But he had the cure for AIDS, you feel me? It was, not, it was profitable for them to assassinate this man because if that, if, now I'm not talking about Nissy Hussle, I'm talking about um, Dr. Savior or kill this man because if, that, if he were to cure people from AIDS, right, they would lose money. Pharmaceutical companies, all, those, all that type shit. You know, but a lot of people don't know that. And um, if y'all feel as though I'm just chapping, running my mouth on the camera, just go ahead and do our research. But going back to the whole Nipsey Hustle thing, you know, this man was an entrepreneur. This man was a crip. And I'm going, the reason I'm saying a crip, because he wasn't shy or he didn't shy from his past. You feel me? A lot of people, when you hear that, people just think of gangbanger and this, that, and the third. You got to realize LA is a whole different lifestyle, California is a whole different lifestyle. I actually had the, um, the chance to experience Inglewood in the hood. I had an Air, um, Airbnb <clears throat> out in October with my folks. We was in the hood. We wasn't on some bougie downtown. Hey, we going down to L.A. We go L.A. No, we downtown. No, no. Nah. We in the trap. And I always wanted to do that. Just like when I went down Atlanta, we was in the trap. But to get back to the point I'm making, I actually seen, you know, different people with like, you know, like, 
they just move different out there, you feel me? So we can't judge a book by his cover because he was a crip. This man didn't have his background to find who he was. This boy was basically chilling at a, a complex he grew up around. They like I was watching a documentary on this boy, man. This shit fucks me up. Like, main man actually, that's like you chilling across the street from your crib or around the corner from your crib at an outlet. Matter of fact, F that. You know how we riding around your city to all my black folks. You know you ride around your city, you see everybody posted out on the corner. You would think, damn, y'all own this poppy star? Like, you know, y'all security out here. Cause everyone hugging the block. You feel me? Just imagine someone out the group that's actually in that circle outside the store. So you know what, yo? F that. Since we always out here, how about we invest in this, yo? Main man, they was 16 years ago, 16 years ago. They invested in a Slauson tea store. You feel me? I didn't know this until I actually educated myself recently by going on YouTube, watching this documentary. They got all these millions of views after his death. And, um, you know, I was watching the story on how the marathon became and how it originated. You know, they used to sell T-shirts and CDs across the, store, across the street, you know, from a store. You know, like how people be selling DVDs and things in that store until cops actually came, took their stuff, and they had to, uh, you know, basically start from the ground zero. They looked up and said, yo, we're going to get this um, building that's for lease. I mean, that's for lease right now, for sale slash lease. They purchased that. You got people from the hood purchasing a, a store across the street from where they grew up at. All right, cool. They got booked. They lost the store. You know, Nipsey in a rap game now. You know, his brother got booked. His brother came back home. Him and, him, him and his brother decide to invest in the store again. Nipsey like, yo, you know, we lost the store when you got booked. You think I should do this again? He said, listen, man, we got to do it here. Like, this is where we started. We got to expand from there. So a lot of people just thinking Nipsey was the one that, you know, was the main one that started it. Actually, it was his team. And that's what he stood for. Like, he never said he just did it. Like, to hear his brother, to hear all these different people saying how they came together as a team, that shit motivated me, yo. And it just made me think, like, damn. Like, we live in a world where a lot of people be feeling as though, you know, it's a competition to be in. It's a competition. It, you have to be in competition with your friends and shit. These people came together to invest in a store and then, and then eventually... You, the main man, Nipsey, purchased the whole complex, bruh. You feel me? And then you get murdered outside your complex. That's the shit I don't understand. You feel me? I wasn't the biggest Nipsey fan, but I will tell you, back in Lincoln, um, my college, my alma mater, I was listening to Nipsey Hart, you know, listening to Crenshaw, listening to Marathon, listening to um, <clears throat> a lot of different songs that he had, you know. Y'all already know Kendrick, my favorite rapper, so... That song, Dedication, that he recently dropped on Rickery Lab was amazing. But to get to the point I'm making about this Nipsey thing that's like making me think deeper than a lot of people um, is the fact that he was respected in his hood. He was respected around the world. And not just because he was a rapper. The fact that he was a businessman. He was relatable. You know, he wasn't your typical rapper that was rapping about killing people and he glorifying that he's, you know, cripping and banging and all that extra shit. He was basically, you know, letting us know the blueprint on how we should move as young African Americans, you know, entrepreneurs, things and that sort. You know, I had an episode where I had Just Real on here and I was speaking to him about his favorite rapper, Nipsey. It wasn't like I knew Nipsey was going to be in this tragic incident, but I asked him, I said, yo, why is it that everyone turned to Nipsey as motivation as an entrepreneur. He broke it down. I'm paraphrasing what I said because I didn't say, say that in those exact terms, but, you know. And he broke it down. He said, yo, he's not just rapping about these things. He's teaching us game and things in that sort. And I need y'all to listen to this song, AOT. When you um, get a chance, right, as I'm saying this, I want you to actually have, like, I don't know if, if you can do it, but I want you to put the song Dedication in the background as I'm saying this right now. The song Dedication with Kendrick Lamar, you feel me, like, it's a meaningful song, like, hearing what he was saying, and also hearing Kendrick verse, you know. It was a part where uh, Kendrick was basically saying, like, <clears throat> you, got, you about to do a song with Nip, 
he's one of the biggest crips. He said, no, he's a man first. You don't hear the, the shit that he spit. He talking about um, black empowerment and businesses. He was saying all these th different things. And this is the verse coming from Kendrick, talking, giving pr um, praise and props to Nip. You know, he got a lot of respect. And I just don't understand why one of us had to kill him. You know, that shit just make you think. You know, uh, I think Meek Mill recently just posted something on Twitter saying, like, hey, can you imagine you going hard for people, for your own, that will kill you? Or something like that. And honestly, that shit, like, hit me different. You feel me? It just make you think, like, you can't do shit for your community sometimes. It ain't enough. You always got a crab in the barrel ass person that want to bring you down. I just don't understand this shit, yo. This is the world we live in, you know? I'm, I'm saying some real shit. This is the world we live in. A lot of people keep saying, yo, we got to do better. We got to do this. We got to do that. All right, sad to say what I'm about to say, but I'm about to say it. Nipsey passed away. Motherfuckers are still on the same shit today. You hear what I'm saying? Are we just going to act like we're in shock that like this happened? Like, don't get me wrong. It's, it, this hit different because he wasn't my favorite rapper, but his, his impact like touched the community and touched the culture. But people want to act like they're about to make a change. All right, are we going to make a change? Are we going to still glorify the shit that caused this? You feel me? Like, that's where, I get, that's where I get lost at. You know, like, don't get me wrong, I listen to a lot of gangbanging ass music. And I was just sitting here thinking, like, to myself, like, if I'm acting all surprised and acting all, like, shocked, like, damn, this shit gotta stop. Like, why am I listening to this? Why am I on my Insta snaps blasting this one to the head? Like, you know what I mean? why am I doing it? I'm being real, because I'm being a hypocrite. I'm being, I'm contradicting what I'm saying. I'm being real. Like, that shit hit different. I'm talking to my boys about this. Like, it just make me think because I, Dev Hall, try my best to give everyone a chance to be on my show. I try my best to give everyone a chance to get their music out there. I try my best to give everyone a chance to get their brand out there. And then you can have people hating on you, people like that. And people like that, ain't nobody, how, you never know. You never know, yo. That's the shit that got him killed. Main man is outside of his store. He felt comfortable to go back to his fucking hood, yo. You feel me? And come to find out, he was actually supposed to be meeting a friend of his that was getting out of jail so he could gift him with clothes. Now, you know it's multiple reports. You feel me? But it's like, God damn, yo. You just seen him in Long London on GQ on Instagram having a relation, a couple quiz, basically seeing how much he knows Long London. You feel me? We just seen him be Grammy nominated for best album of the year, Victory Lap. You ain't never hear him on some bullshit. You feel me? And then you just got a sucker ass person that's gonna go and, that's gonna blow your damn head off, yo. And run them off and come back and kick you in your head. That's the shit where we're gonna touch on this conspiracy shit. You feel me? Let me take a uh, sip of this Yangling. And it's water too. With this conspiracy shit, like, check this out. You know how a lot of people be like, ah, the Illuminati. A lot of people be like, ah, it's conspiracy theory. Right? Now, check this out. I don't necessarily know too much about um, this guy, Eric Holder, but I try my best to do some type of research on him. Me, man, is supposed to be a known killer. Never was committed for those killings. Um, he's a crip. Boy name was uh, Shitty Cuz. I guess this is his uh, gang name or whatever. All right, in and out of mental institutions. Let's say it loud and clear. He's in and out of mental institutions. All right. I wonder who's funding that. Um, and on top of that, he was allegedly released out of jail two days prior to him shooting and murdering um, Nipsey Hussle. So it just makes me think. All right. For him to be well-respected and well-connected in his hood, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this man is Iron Man. I'm not saying this man is G.O.D. I'm not saying this man is invincible. But for him to be, I'm going to say this again, for, but for him to be well-respected and protected in his hood, you feel me, 
There's no way in the world, from the, from the camera view I've seen, an angle, that he should have been touched like that, yo. I mean, you got other people, day ones or whatever, hold ass. I'm out. I'm out. Speedy Gonzalez. Don't get me wrong. A lot of people react different when shit like that pop off. You feel me? Don't get me wrong. I thought I would be bitching when I get robbed at gunpoint. When I got robbed at gunpoint, one time, it was to a point, it was to a point where I just froze. Like, oh shit, all right, uh, here. Other people probably would have been, oh shit, you feel me? Like, I, I, I know the differences. And I'm not saying like I'm a heroic person or I'm a bold person, but I thought I would be way more scared than what I was. It was like, all right, shit, you're going to take my life, you're going to take my life. If not, thank God I'm living another day, you feel me? At that particular moment, you got people that glorify this gang shit and you saying ain't nothing happening to my neck. You see on camera people hard ass, ain't nobody make sure that Nipsey cool besides this one person coming out the store. You got two security guards, right? I want to know what the hell is we security guards for. They both got shot once, I think. You know, that's what the report said. You know, I'm going off the reports. You know, you can't believe everything the reports say. But um, I'm going off the reports. Why wasn't no one shooting back? I'm not saying that it's good to shoot back. But in this instance, why is no one shooting back? Y'all got guns, right? All right, cool. Why is no one in the, out of the stores coming out strapped? Like, that, this is what I'm saying. Like, we're not going to act like this store was in a nice suburban area. This is in his hood. Like, y'all not understanding that? Like, just cause he made the complex or built, got that, purchased that complex, not gonna say he made the hood better. I'm being real. This is who he is. This is real shit. And I'm reading into it and make you think about a government situation. This bull, Eric Holder, right, is being represented by Chris Darden. The boy who, um, I just found this news out, so I gotta break it. But um, Chris Darton was um, O.J. Simpson prosecutor. Well, he was a part of the prosecution team because there was a white lady in there too. But um, the pro he was the prosecutor. And it make you just think like, hmm? All right, okay. My man T to say, oh, you know, it's money in defense. All right, cool. But damn, you about to, you about to, you about to represent a mother that just killed this boy. And it just make you just think like, all right, I need to see a mugshot. Y'all see a mugshot yet? I mean, I, I ain't expecting them to say nothing, but I need to see a mugshot. I ain't seen no mugshot. We talking to Bell, seven mil, uh. You feel me? I'm just saying a lot of shit. It just make you just think, all right, cool. Nipsey Hussle is about to meet with the LAPD chief and all these other people about stopping gang violence or gun violence, all this, all this. And this shit happened. You know, um, one thing that I want to say to the black community, can we stop, let me, let me get closer, let me put my hood on, because I got to get in my street bag for y'all. Can we stop attacking one another for trying to be aware? You feel me? Because a lot of people, like Lil Duval and everyone talking about, I hate fake woke people. That's the dumbest shit I ever heard. You feel me? Like, don't get me wrong. You, have you ever met someone that's like so serious about what they're saying and then you found out they don't know what the fuck they're saying? All right, cool. They was passionate about what they were saying. Check this out. The fake woke people are actually paying attention to what the media is dishing out. You feel me? What do you mean, Dev? This Dr. Sabi situation. Now people know who Dr. Sabi is, right? People are actually going back Back in years to Lisa Left Eye, who passed away, right? People are like, what are you, why are you mentioning Lisa Left Eye and Dr. Because we tie it back to a documentary, you feel me? Now, someone had made a post and said, all right, do you really think the government is going to Honduras to actually get on the road to cause Lisa Left Eye to be in a car accident? And it made me have the emoji face like, hmm. That actual, that actual post made a point. But I don't give a damn what that post say. I'm talking about this Nipsey Hussle situation. Nipsey, it ain't no coincidence this man said, if they um, kill me, y'all better 
y'all better ride for me. I mean, if, if they kill me over this document, y'all better ride. Come on, you feel me? Like, that, that's real. I don't, you know, he, he came out of his mouth and said it. You know, a lot of people wasn't openly talking about Dr. Sebi. Even Brother Polite even said out of his damn mouth who was a person that Dr. Sebi had cured from um, diabetes. He said, if you try to get his word out there, they're going to try to kill you. You're putting your life at risk. This is facts, yo. I'm being real. So Nick Cannon voluntarily said, I'm going to let this story go on. I'm going to finish the documentary. You got people saying that. Now, my point is this. Why are we mad at people for trying to be educated? People saying it's not a conspiracy theory. Who the fuck are you to say that? People saying it is a conspiracy theory. Who the fuck are you to say that? It don't matter what it is until we know what the fuck the truth is. So why are we getting mad? Now, can I get mad at y'all? So now I'm going to take my hood back off so I get back on my professional shit. And I'm still cursing. Can I get mad at y'all? I'm going to get mad because it's a lot of people that's getting mad at these fake woke people and the people that's blaming the black on black crime. I'm going to blame y'all for looking like fools for posting that Jay-Z had created a trust fund of $15 million for Nipsey Hussle children. Where did y'all get that information from? It looked like someone has got a Google pic from Google of those two and made a caption over top of it and said, fuck it. All right, you know, everybody on this Nipsey Hussle situation or anything I post, I know they're going to jump on it. Bang, we got it. All right, now everyone in their mind posting, and you got all these rappers, everything. Me knowing, me being me, and I pay attention to certain people, Jay-Z ain't going to be out there putting no damn amount on anything. Not with his, not with his name attached to it. You, you, you feel me? Like, that's real shit. For it to be 15 million, like, he's not putting no, he's not disclosing no amount. That's, that's real shit. And if y'all don't believe me, go back to Meek Mill when he was on The Breakfast Club. Meek, Meek Mill said Jay-Z spent millions on his lawyer fee. Jay-Z never spoke on that. But Meek spoke on it. Lil Wayne said Jay-Z paid millions on the taxes. Jay-Z never spoke on that. Lil Wayne spoke on that. So for someone to just say, Jay-Z is wrong, like, you, you, you get what I'm saying? And, it's, and Rock Nation shut that shit down immediately. We're denying that. Like, like we, we got to do our research. We have to. But I'm off this Nipsey situation. For those that's interested in um, commenting on that, just comment on the, um, you know, the box below under the YouTube channel. My condolences go out to the family of Nipsey Hussle. I'm Lauren London. And, um, you know his community of Slauson and Crenshaw. You know, um, it's sad that we lost an iconic figure um, in the rap game and on top of that in the entrepreneurial world and on top of that, the community for the culture. You know, it's just sad that another black man is down for trying to enhance the vision for young entrepreneurs to exceed in life. You know, he tried to uh, show us how we got to buy our neighborhood back, you know, show us how to move strategically. And on top of that, just show us how to move independently. You know, I was watching, like I told y'all earlier in the episode, a documentary on him and how he started the marathon. He basically was just saying the marathon is for those that never quit. You know, for those that, you know, continue to grind, that see, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. That's, you know, that's a go-get, basically. And it can, you can apply it to anyone. You can be a rapper, entrepreneur, you know, a basketball player, anything. He was saying that applies to anyone. So um, rest in peace to that man, and, you know, may his legacy continue. Episode 15, The Bull, Death Hall.